That one's like... That's a horseshoe. Hey guys, and welcome back to Ellie Knows Rocks. Right now I am standing in Death Valley. Let's get on with this journey. Thank you guys so much for watching and being part of this adventure. Let's go see what we find. Recap from our last video, I left my house at 3 a.m. in order to get to Las Vegas to meet up with Brian to go to Death Valley and see some amazing metamorphic rocks and the coolest endangered lizard I've ever seen in my life. Now we're headed to Panama Springs Rainbow Canyon, making our way to Cerro Gordo. Panama Springs has a view of the Panama Mountains. It's a short, rugged, fault block mountain range. It runs about 100 miles long, forming the western wall of Death Valley. And the highest peak of the Panama Range is Telescope Peak. The rock that we're looking at is a migmatite and is high metamorphosed. The thrust fault that controls this block system placed older Paleoproterozoic rock over younger Cretaceous rocks. Not mountains. Isn't that pretty? Those beautiful, beautiful metamorphics. They've been folded and tilted. This is so cool. Really cool hoist and grabbing system right there in the middle. This is rain. You said this is Rainbow Canyon. Yeah. Apparently you get really cool fighter jets that'll come like blazing through this area. But all of this is a bunch of volcanics, all of this area on Rainbow Canyon. And it's amazing because of different plate convergence and spreading the ground apart. You have all your metamorphic rocks over there and then you have all your volcanics over here that you can tell at the very bottom layer down here looks like also has some metamorphic action with all the volcanics layering down on top. When in fact, that is metamorphic rock. It's actually marble. It's metamorphosed Paleozoic limestone. And the layers above it are actually basalt flows and lapilli beds from the Darwin Hills volcanoes, which last erupted sometime between two and four million years ago during the Pliocene epoch. There's also pyroclastic rock that can be seen here as well. And the weathering from the variety of rocks here create the beautiful colors of the canyon walls. Metamorphic action down there at the very bottom. Some cool faulting happening over there. Some dikes and cross-cutting relationships that are really neat. So we've got all this like pyroclastic flow. That's what this is. So solidified ash, volcanic ash. This is one of the buildings from the Civilian Conservation Corps in Death Valley, otherwise known as a CCC camp. In 1933, Franklin Roosevelt wanted to get the country back on its feet after the Depression, and a major part of that effort was establishing the CCC camps, which took unemployed men throughout the country and put them back to work. Death Valley was turned into a national monument in February of 1933. In October of that same year, 400 men entered Death Valley to get the monument into shape for the American public. And over the next nine years, 12 companies would work throughout Death Valley, and these crews graded 500 miles of road, created airplane fields, installed water and telephone lines, and built 76 buildings for themselves. They were paid $25 a month, with $20 going to their family and $5 staying in their pocket. The men in the CCC camp were among the first to be called to the war effort in May of 1942. Today, you can still see their efforts in the campgrounds, roads, and some small buildings that still stand. Death Valley could not have accommodated visitors within the first years without the help of the CCC camp. As I eat my snack at Panama Springs, a huge storm is blowing in. Now keep in mind, when I got down to stovepipe wells, it was about 90 degrees. Right now, it's about 76 degrees, so the temperature is cooling off rapidly. And we're about to make our way up to Cerro Gordo. Look at that, guys. Welcome to Cerro Gordo, California. It's open 9 to 5. No, we've got to sign that. Can you see it? Yeah. Look how cool that is. So that's pretty neat. Oh, there's like a lot of entries. That's really cool. So 
Here we go. sticker in there because yep it's there <laughs> that's cool a little Prince Albert can oh yeah that's awesome Oof. and we're off on the dirt road to Cerro Gordo if you're gonna travel this road, you definitely want an all-terrain vehicle or a four-wheel driver high clearance. The scenery is awesome. In between these two peaks is an old mining tram. The geology is pretty awesome down these narrow roads. We have sedimentary rocks like limestone and metamorphic rocks like quartzite. And on top of all of that, we have sightings of historical mining features. Look at that. Oh, cool. Love mining stuff. Oh boy, we're going up this guy's in the van. <laughs> and we're on our way up this steep portion of the hill. It's actually a lot steeper than it looks. And we're not in a four wheel drive van. We're in a two wheel drive van that has extra suspension, good tires, and the tires have been deflated to eight pounds. Brian from Mojave Wave has put a lot of love and care into his vans in order to give people an awesome ride. And now the trip we're on today is a little off the beaten path, but he's with a random geologist who loves old mines, so let's go see what we find. But look how rough this stuff is about to get. And the van is hanging on like a trooper. Now for those of you looking at the ground, if you can see it, there are tons of trumpet plants out there. And no one freak out, we're by a lot of mines, so of course there's gonna be a lot of trumpet plants. It just means there's heavy mineralization and heavy metals in the ground. Sweet! You know when you see old tails and dump piles like this, you're coming up upon a big mine. Old mill processing, dump piles, we love this. Now, just as everything is running smoothly and great, and we're seeing all this old workings, there's a little bit of trouble. I'm worried we're gonna get stuck. Ooh, I don't wanna be. You can get closer to this. I can also get out and help if you need. First attempt didn't work, so we are trying it again. The last thing I wanna do is walk any further because actually my ankle still does really hurt but we are slipping and can't move once more. So we're giving it a third try. Okay. One more attempt, guys. Here we go. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, and that clearly worked. That's why I need a locker. No, 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 the cable. I was like, yeah, that's gonna keep people out. Check it out, guys. It's been a bit since we've been to a new abandoned mine. Holy crap. Oh my gosh. Yes. We have timbers and rock work. Oh, that's powder shack. Okay. Oh, good lord. Sweet. Ah, sorry. I'm touching the stuff here. Oh, and there's more stuff over there. Man, oh man. <laughs> you guys, look at this. Yeah. Ah, this is pretty freaking sweet. Look at how they stacked these rocks up. Is that not insane? That area over there that's been like, oh, can you see it buried and whatnot? We're gonna go inside this guy. Hopefully there's no critters. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> this would have said stay out, stay safe, stay alive, that kind of thing. It's been ruined. Look 
Okay, there's like a fair amount of tracks and whatnot. Wow. This is all metamorphic. Oh, wow. Oh, it'll burn her hand. Ooh, it stinks. There's some bats going on in here. Look at all this stuff, guys. Holy crap. Wow. Oh, this is cool. This is creepy. So how far back does this go? Oh, you haven't you haven't gone back the full distance? Oh, I love all the lights together. This is awesome. Hmm? Oh, this, how cool is that? I don't have a black light on me. Wow. There's appetite in there. And then, I think that might be calcite, but I don't have my etcher with me. Yeah, you can scratch it with a fingernail. So this is calcite crystals. That's awesome. Now those holes actually that you're looking at for dynamite, those are made by it with a jack leg. And they're a really, really long drill. Well, that's always great to see. Stop. Well, I think it might have been us echoing. I'm just making sure that it's not like something coming at us. Yes. Good gosh. Yeah, I want your flashlight. This could possibly be a Florence. Since the fault makes a weaker zone around the limestone, meteoric water could be precipitating out dissolved salts, creating this white fluffy mineral. Burn you. <laughs> Oh, gotcha. Wow, I think that we could probably spend half a day in here. Dust is insane. That's so cool. All right, no, turn your lights out. That's the entrance. We've looked, barely walked in here, like maybe quarter, like eighth quarter a mile-ish, something like that. We haven't even walked in that far. <laughs> and it keeps going. It's got triple that distance, if you think about it, going way, way back in there. Light power, oh my gosh. That is such a trip. If I had like more time, we would go and like massive explore, but I didn't know this was here. I had no idea. Well, I mean, I knew there was a bunch of abandoned mines up here, but I didn't know that, you yeah, know. Bolt, like, touch the, just after, just <gasps> yep. a seconds of. That, that, well, if you're in a cold area, mm -hmm. your hands are going to be warm, right? the door that's heavily used by a critter.
Is there a bed in there? Look at that. <laughs> What's it say? Store in dry place. High explosives, dangerous. They were making the top with dynamite boxes. Oh, that's cool. That's fabulous. Careful. How cool. Oh, yep, mama has four little legs. The way they have this powder shack split up is actually very common. They would have higher explosives near the back, usually behind a better door than just a screen door, but nevertheless, they would have it split up in some way. And powder shacks were always put as far away from the mine as they could be conveniently. And even in here, you can see the metamorphic striations in the rock. <laughs> I think that's pretty awesome. But no dynamite boxes. Oh, the van is doing a great job. The thing is pretty cool. Got us up here. Oh, okay, so they were digging up there too. Mm-hmm, way up top. These are old tracks, guys, this is pretty cool. Most old mines would put their dump and tailings piles right out in front of whatever shaft or adit that they were working on, and they would run big long tracks out to the edge, which made it easy for them to push their ore carts all the way to the end and keep extending their dump pile, making it so that it was further away from the entrance and keeping their area clean. Now dump piles were material that didn't get used for ore. An ore pile would have gone down an ore chute and been processed somewhere else. This material is just considered the overburden but it makes for spectacular features. And it's a great thing to look for when looking for abandoned mines. Look at the lake, guys. That's Owens Valley down there. Owens Lake and the Sierras on the other side. First time that lake has had water in it in about a century. Wow. A road right here. Another batch of, where'd he go? stacked rocks and then both of those right over there definitely buildings of some kind because that just wasn't put there because it needed to catch the dirt or hold anything back and that was probably a road to the mine that went up around the side of a hill no trespassing <laughs> no trippy sink as we get closer to Cerro Gordo, we keep seeing more and more old mining artifacts. This area was home to a lot of different silver and lead mines. Get those adits all over the hill. What? One right there. Big one up there. Two smaller ones. And all of the mine, whoops, workings. 55 degrees. That's cold. Y'all know I'm a chicken in the cold, it's freezing. We have made it. And it is cold. <laughs> we officially made it to the Cerro Gordo Mines, also known as Fat Hill in Spanish. <laughs> Mining officially began in Cerro Gordo in 1865, after it was discovered by Pablo Flores. And in 1867, the word spread and scores of prospectors were arriving from all over the country seeking their fortune. We're gonna go check in at the flag, but we are here in Cerro Gordo. It's pretty neat so far. It's a bunch of old mining equipment, mining stuff, mining houses. This is fantastic. In 1867, a local businessman, Victor Boudoui, he opened a store and acquired several mining claims, including interest in the Union Mine. We're checking in at the flag and it's 52 degrees. <sighs> wow. By 1869, Cerro Gordo was the largest producer of silver and lead in the nation. And teams of mules would travel from Cerro Gordo to Los Angeles, California, turning in their ore. In Cerro Gordo's heyday, 
The town was home to several different mines and hundreds of structures, including bars, a general store, and the famous American Hotel. Now with the town being as isolated as it was, it gave way to a lot of gunfights that were recorded in its history. Unfortunately, the mine and property of Cerro Gordo was very short-lived. In 1877, a fire ran rampant throughout the mines and burned down a lot of the infrastructure. And with the prices of lead falling and silver falling, it was really the final straw. And most of its inhabitants and miners left as quickly as they came, thus leaving a lot of their belongings and things behind as you see in these shelves. A few years later, in 1905, the mine was brought back to life for a short period of time as it was used for zinc processing. The town was mostly abandoned except for a few stragglers who stayed behind. In 2018, the town was purchased for $1.4 million by several different investors. Among them was Brent Underwood, and he's been living there since the pandemic in 2020. He intends to develop the area as a tourist attraction while maintaining the historical nature of the mining property, as well as make it an artist destination for tourist groups and accessible to the public as well. And in light of the American Hotel being burnt down in June of 2020, he is on the men's to rebuild it and the structure is looking good. At this time, the general store has mainly been restored as well as there's a library put in, an old core and assay shed that has been revamped adorable little outhouses that I had the privilege of using, and a few other small homes, including the one that Brent stays in. Yeah, we signed the book. We signed the book. And while I was visiting, I had no idea if I would meet Brent or not, but it turns out he was there. And I got to chat for a few minutes and say hi. I really wanted to ask him if I could record him saying my tagline of I'll see you on the next one, but I chickened out. And instead, I got a few pictures and something special. Gosh, guys, we are going to the hoist house at Cerro Gordo. Cerro Gordo, Ryan's behind me. Now let's talk geology for a second. This whole area that we're looking at is in large part sedimentary and is about the Jurassic age. And then we have some early Mississippian, which is mostly shallow water marine carbonate rocks. And by contrast, they're overlaid with late Mississippian to Jurassic strata, which represents a variety of deep water marine, shallow water marine, and non-marine depositional settings. This reflects a lot of tectonic activity in the area. Now what we're about to see is called the hoist house. This is where the main head frame was stored, or at least sheltered. And this hoist house was built over the Belshaw shaft. Now try saying that three times fast. Now, even though I wasn't allowed to go into the area just for safety reasons, I was able to look at this massive head frame. And that head frame was built over a main shaft that goes 1100 feet into the ground. Off of this main shaft, there are several drifts that go out to different layers of the mine. And some of them, if you've seen in some of Brent's videos, they're impassable because they've either filled with water or they've collapsed. So for me, seeing the preserved history of this area was fantastic. I was lit up like a Christmas tree. Can you just imagine being here in its heyday? I mean, even just the view of looking at the mountains, it's spectacular. I have to give a huge thank you to Brent's helper for taking us up here. It was awesome. And since he took us up there, he asked me if he could pick my brain a little bit about a few geology questions he had back at the main shop. So he took me down and picked my brain for a little bit about a couple geologic scenarios. Uh, Belshaw shaft, that's the hoist house. Right that's there. okay, so that's, that's where that was. That we were just looking at. Cool. And okay, so this one goes way down. down. Yep. Awesome. And so you can see down here there's an 1100 level. Right mm hmm. There. And then. There's a 900, mm -hmm. and the Estelle Tunnel was trying to get to that. A 700, there should be a five, there's a 550. 550. As we go on to chat and point and discuss things, that conversation will remain between us. As we get ready to leave, of course, I'm filming what I can. I love the old remnants of things, and we're planning the next three stops that we have along the way before we even get done with this trip, which includes two other mines and two other stops within Death Valley before I'm completely done with this trip. Thank you guys for joining me on this adventure, and I'll see you on the next one.